think it is possible to get a deal uh, in November. Uh, I've said that uh, last week, uh, and I'd say it again this week. Um, uh, but of course, this, this requires a number of things. Uh, first of all, it requires the negotiating teams in Brussels to have a basis uh, for a political agreement or sign-off at an EU summit. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, in fact, after this meeting, David and I will be, will be meeting on, the, on this particular issue, um, uh, just on a uh, one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's no coincidence that this week I've met Dominic Rabb, Jeremy Hunt, uh, and, now, and now David today, uh, focusing really on the same issue, uh, which is how do we ensure uh, that the commitments that have been made to Ireland and to the EU, uh, to the credit of the British Prime Minister, who in my view understands the complexity and the fragility of Northern Ireland in the context of Brexit. Um, how do we ensure that those commitments are now followed through on in terms of the legal text of a withdrawal agreement that is nearly done? I, I think we've made a lot of progress on this in recent weeks. I think Michel Barnier has shown flexibility and imagination to try to help overcome some of the political challenges that are clearly there. Um, but we are not quite there yet. Uh, and in my view, there is uh, some movement needed still uh, on the UK side to, uh, to find a, a legal wording uh, that, uh, that can allow this process to agree to a draft withdrawal treaty, so stroke withdrawal agreement. There has been in the last few weeks movement on both sides in Brussels and I want to pay tribute to both teams of negotiators who have been working out there. Those talks, uh, those intensive talks continue. And while I obviously can't give up you know, a running commentary on the detail of an ongoing negotiation, um, I want to leave you no doubt that uh, my Prime Minister and the Government remain utterly committed to the undertakings that we have given.